you don't believe that we would need to hire a part-time or a full-time teacher at the other levels because of the scheduling that's required in this course, or these two courses? I believe that there's a possibility that we could potentially rearrange a little bit at the elementary level some of the teaching uh, schedules. I will tell you the string schedules are full, but I do think that um, we can be creative with that. We talked a lot about that. Because it's going to be a tight schedule, we want to support that. It looks like, based on numbers we see now, that we would be able to do that without staffing. And the high school was in agreement that as long as it didn't increase staffing, that we would move forward. So at this point, it looks like we would be able to run that with pretty tight schedule. Anybody else have any other questions? So this would have to go forward then. Everybody agreeable to that? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good. So the high school STEM program improvement proposal. All right, good evening, everyone. Uh, for those of you I haven't met, there's a few new faces since I was at a board meeting last. I'm Matt Peitzman, um, Penridge grad, Penridge community member, Penridge parent. Um, I love working here, and I love uh, what I teach and everything. So I'm always really excited to talk about anything we're doing. And uh, those of you that haven't heard me say this, please come into our rooms and see what we're doing. We'd be more than happy to share uh, what we what we do. We're all very proud of it. Uh, so we have two proposals tonight. I'm speaking on behalf of uh, Alan Andrakaitis, who is at. Uh, Alan and I are part of a national uh, group of STEM guitar teachers. I had a family wedding this week, so that's why I didn't go. But he's out in Indiana uh, working with that group. So he asked me to come in and speak tonight, so I'm happy to do that. Uh, so the first one is, uh, we have three, um, we had three levels of woodworking and now this year we have a fourth because freshmen coming into the high school can take any of our uh, first level tech A classes as freshmen now. Uh, so this class, Artistic Wood 3, uh, was first written, uh, I would guess, about a decade ago, if not over a decade ago. <coughs> Um, so Alan and I work a lot on talking about the future and where we're going as a department. And uh, this past summer we wrote the Wood Curriculum, Wood 4 curriculum, and realized that it's been a real long time since Wood, uh, wood 3 had been updated or talked about. Um, with this course, uh, there is some costs involved. Uh, two things we are asking for, one of them is called a wide belt sander, uh, which is talked about in this first paragraph. And then the second one is called an automatic tool changer. Uh, I'll try and make this as, as easy as possible uh, if you're not familiar with woodworking. Um, basically, a, a wide belt sander is a machine. It's not a handheld uh, machine. It is a floor mounted machine that has a sanding belt in it, and you can very easily, user-friendly, these newer models, send a piece of wood through or a glued up tabletop or a panel to a cabinet or a trunk that you're building to send it through to get it level and also sand it at the same time. Uh, I can speak from experience where I used to work. I had a very older version of these machines. It broke down all the time. I was the only one who could operate it because it just wasn't reliable enough for students. And that's why here at Penn Ridge, we have a older model of things called drum sanders. Also run by the teacher, not by the students. Um, well now, related to the STEM guitar thing, Alan and I were in Washington State this summer. And out there, some of the guys that we've become friends with have some amazing facilities um, and one of the things that is kind of the standard are these newer versions of wide belt sanders that students can use. They are reliable enough, easy enough to use, uh, obviously very safe enough for a student to use. And the real 
um, emphasis of why we'd be asking for this is it helps alleviate time of hand sanding. We're really proud of what we do in our department, especially woodworking, but a lot of their time is spent sanding, which is not really a great learning curve skill, if you will. You know, once students have kind of mastered it, it, it doesn't really get any faster. They still have to do it. It's not something, you can definitely get better at it, but it doesn't really cut a lot of time down. And when you talk about what would you rather have students doing, well now, along with the workshop we did this summer, we're trying to incorporate 3D drawings and modeling just not in our CAD classes that Bob Miller teaches, but in all of our classes. So our hope would be something like this can alleviate time of students doing sanding and then do some of these new, if you will, 21st century skills that they're learning in the middle school now with the awesome rewrite that we've done down there. That's just one example of what this could do with for us. Uh, cutting about a third of the time down of sanding. They still do need to do some hand sanding afterwards, but it would greatly increase uh, the amount of time that they can spend on other things. The other machine, or add-on actually in this case, is called an ATC, an automatic tool changer. Uh, so in the middle schools they have CNC router machines. We also have them up here. One of the biggest drawbacks with uh, CNC machines are the time that it takes the operator. In all cases, it's the teacher. We don't allow the students to uh, change the tooling on them, which would mean if it was drilling a hole, you got to take the drill bit out and now put in a cutting bit. Well, that takes time, and there's downtime that the teacher has to be doing that instead of something else or whatever it may be. Or it might be, okay, I have the machine set up for this today. You get it done, you gotta wait till tomorrow till I set up the next thing and, and stuff like that. Um, what this does is, and these are really cool to see in action, is it's a vacuum suction system. The machine does its cutting, then goes over, drops the bit, picks up the next one, and that's all part of the programming that the students would be doing in these advanced level woodworking classes. Um, the reason why this wasn't asked for last year when this machine was uh, proposed, it just came in this summer and Alan's been working with it, is uh, this option wasn't available yet. Maverick, the company, uh, Maverick Legacy, they didn't have this available yet. So they are now, so that's why we're asking uh, for it now. So you have, um, well I guess, are there any questions about the two machines? Yes. How many CNC? Do we have two at the high school now? Do we get two? Um, there's one in each of the wood shops, and then I have one in the guitar building one. So you have three. So are you going to need three of these? No. The the tool changer only goes to the newest one that Alan got. It doesn't go to the other CNCs that we have. Okay. Is that the same for the middle schools? No. No. This is only for, I mean, it'd be great if, if we I'm all just, had them. I'm just but wondering if they're going to come no. back to me for like five more of these things. No, as far as I know, the, the CNC's that the rest of us have, tool changers aren't even an option on them. So that's not... So you have, it, you have to do all the work. Yeah. The, at this the summer workshop, we were kidding that I'm the tool changer with these. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, no, that is not a... Uh, a thought in our mind that, oh, we'll get this one the next year. No. As far as I know, my machine can't even have a tool chain. Okay. How long does it really take to sand something? It can take a while. Oh, yeah. and you'll find I, I, out. I, 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 it, depends, it depends what you're saying. Get her a block of wood. to sand off something that's stained or something right. that's painted, right. but aren't they usually getting new wood, and so they're just sanding it so it's smooth, right? Well, <laughs> it's... <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think of the best way to to I get mean, yeah. to get stuff really good is beyond what you see in stores. Like the way stuff, you know, Walmart and Target, that's not even wood. But to even like find stuff in a store isn't the quality we're shooting for. You know, you'd have to actually go to a furniture maker for the quality we're shooting for. 
Um, the guitars, for example, my kids spend at least two weeks sanding their bodies before we stain them or paint them. Because any, like I tell the kids who are painting their guitars, they're due this week to paint, that's why it's in my head, that paint only, you know, amplifies your mistakes. The smallest little nicks or scratches, paint shoots it out. Um, now I know a lot of our furniture doesn't get painted, but the same thing happens when you apply oil and things like that. So sit, our kids spend actually a lot of time sanding. So I would think that, I think as you already kind of alluded to, that in the middle school, you don't necessarily need this because they're doing more basic projects. Mm -hmm. But I can see how, since we do have them starting in middle school and now they're going up, by the time they get to high school, they are going to be doing projects that will require a lot more time spent on detail. Right. So, yeah. um, but you said this thing gets mounted into the floor? So the uh, belt sander. The unit. big thing. Yeah, the wide belt sander. Yeah, that was the size of it. The actual size of it. it was, the machine we're looking at is actually kind of maybe a little bit wider than this podium. And then, depending on how big of a board you would want to send through it, you would need room on either side of it. Mm -hmm. But that's another great thing about these newer units. The one I had where I used to work was like eight feet wide and like eight feet, it literally created like a wall in the middle of your shop. Whereas these are much more compact, but can handle like the same piece of wood, if you will. But there's room in the classroom? That yes. You okay. Yep. That's what I yeah. Okay. And would, would this wide belt sander service all your woodworking shops? Like, would they all come to this room to well, use it? Well, the benefit for Kids in 337, where Alan teaches, is mm -hmm. all four levels that he would have would benefit from it. Um, Jim Murkowski teaches next to him, so he could easily have benefits to it. I'm kind of the overflow for woodworking downstairs, where like this year I teach one of them. I could work out a time to, if I wanted to, go up. So, yes, it would be, could benefit the entire woodworking. Program. So we just need one, we wouldn't need one in every classroom. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Anybody else have any other questions? And Dr. Shrek, these are program improvement to the budgeted through program improvement. That oh, yeah. is correct. That was my no. question. Yeah. I actually think. Um, oh, and then I just also wanted to, you kind of already answered the question, but they'll still learn how to do it by hand. Yeah. So that they learn yeah. that. Yeah. Art Absolutely. Yes. We're not. Yes. Okay. Because what this, uh, the why, the automated sanders won't give you as good of a job, a final job as a person would. So these are really good in the beginning stages, and that's when it's really time consuming getting all those scratches out. Whereas later on, you want to be doing it by hand anyway to get it smooth and okay. all that. I just yes. want to make sure they're still having the hands yes. on artists. Yes. Okay. All right. I was just curious, at the tech school, sometimes they make products and sell them. With all of this equipment that we have, have we thought of doing something like that? And can we do something like that? I don't, honestly, I can't answer that because I'm not really familiar with what the tech school does. I know we'd certainly be open to learning about it and then we could talk about it, but I don't have a, an opinion on it because I honestly didn't know that they did that. Well, the tech school has closed their uh, file. Right, and, and that's why I'm wondering if we could, well, now that we're, you know, we're doing all of these things and we have the advanced tools, it might be something, a good resource for the community, too. So, um, we certainly can explore that. I will tell you this, though, at the Arts Festival, when I try to go with the students and say, can I buy it? They won't they sell it. They won't yeah. sell it. That's what I was actually I'm thinking. There's always people that want to buy stuff at the Arts Festival. It's for my mom, it's for my grandmother. Right. But I see your point, and I think that's something that we can look into. But when they finally have that product, boy, are they proud. Mm -hmm. And you've seen and right before, so. oh and my gosh, it's just amazing. Yeah. It really is. I tried. Stuff. I want to take home a rotten chair. But I <laughs> <laughs> All right, so does anybody have any objection to moving this proposal? Now, as, oh. as someone who's wrestled with those old-fashioned belt sanders, <laughs> I think that's a great idea. Right. Yeah. Just, yeah. 
It's, um, I'm sorry, it, uh, it was down here. Oh, uh, sure, yeah. Well, both, the, the wide belt sander is 20,000, the <coughs> ATC is 10. It's two different things, but they're 30. ATC I think it holds five, yeah. but I don't know if they're all chunks. Yeah, chunks. Yeah, yep. I think it's a time, so it does make sense to me to get something that will save the time because you only have 46 minutes or whatever you're, right. you know, so yeah. you don't have a lot of time. And just program and then it goes around and does it. Yeah, it's, yeah, you, makes sense. With um, the program that we're trying to use is called Fusion 360, which is a free 3D modeling and cam software that's cloud based. Uh, so, we're it's a really kind of great solution at the high school where the kids have a laptop and they can run some cloud based. When you program those CAM modules for this cut tapes, this, the software actually knows to tell, if there is a ATC, to tell it to, okay, at this point, now go change your bit. And it's really pretty crazy when you see them working. So it kind of gears them towards like a machine type of Right, career. yeah, yeah. Which is what the Wood 4 class that we wrote over the summer is, heavily based in CNC work because that's now what is kind of an industry standard. So not that we're ever preparing kids for a job here at the high school, you know, it's a tech school kind of focus. We still like give them the experience of, hey, here, you know, just like in any class, here's what the real world's doing. Yeah. yeah. So that's the, the idea with that. So if you have incoming freshmen coming to your woodshop, do you mm -hmm. ever suggest that they have a high interest that they should pursue going to the tech school? Yeah, what, Jim Murkowski and I usually talk at 8th grade parents night, mm -hmm. and that's a probably the most common question, you know, they love STEM or woodworking in the middle school. And we try and tell them, you know, if they really feel like that's the route they want to go, then investigate it, pursue it. Um, we also say, you know, as a ninth grader, you could come here and, you know, end up going there as a tenth grader or whatever, too. You know, that you, I would just hate a kid either way to try some and then not like it, like, oh, I came here, I really wish I went there or went there, you know. Mm -hmm. So you try and give them the best explanation you can, but. What kind of warranties do we get with those? Can you speak up, please? What kind of warranties do we get? That's a great question. I don't know offhand because Alan was the one researching these things. Um, we do have a uh, kind of a guy on call, a maintenance guy who's really great. He serves kind of the Delaware Valley and even more so he's from up in Nazareth. Um, and he's really good because I've, when I worked in another school I used him and one of my machines went down. And he contacted the company and found out it was under warranty and at the time and stuff. So I would I would think um, particulars I can't answer, but I would feel pretty confident in And Matt, we can get that information. Yeah. We get that information. Uh, yeah. <laughs> just okay. No, that would be good to know. Yeah. And then that would probably include the standard. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's how many years is the standard? Oh I don't know. Oh, I'd like to read that. We'll get that information to you. You have a part two, right? Yes. Yeah, are we ready for that? Yeah, okay. okay. Uh, so the next part is something that I think is an awesome idea. Um, that's offering our uh, third level, which is the one we just talked about, and our level four classes with honors credit. Uh, we talked about the art show earlier. And if you've ever been there, I. The, discussing honors for these is kind of a challenge. It keeps wrestling in my head. But if you've been at the art show, it really is incredible what our kids do, especially in woodworking. So to say, well, what would you do to make it honors? We're at honors already. That's like where Penridge Tech Ed has been. So when you look at neighboring districts, that's when you can compare what, say, general woodworking would be to honors. We're not proposing to have two classes. It's that level three and level four would become honors credit. 
uh, for students. We know there's a lot of student interest in it and that students would be really excited uh, for this. I know Alan and I, we talked about, you know, comparing. Well, he started looking at the curriculum that we've written in three and four and comparing it to colleges. And that's rarely where we see the comparable kind of terminology and what you want to do in the uh, curriculum. Uh, so that's, again, it, it, it's tough for me to say, oh, will we be doing this, this, and this? I did talk about level four and how uh, we're incorporating the CNC, but also in level three, kids will get introduced to it. It's not a requirement in level three, but students can certainly pursue using computer and programming in level three. Um, but this, the, sometimes I, I feel inadequate as a teacher, not that I teach these, but I go to the art show and I'm like, how does a kid do that? I can't even do that. It, it's incredible what, what they do. And again, I'm so proud to be to be part of this, what we do here. But that's really the truth of it. We're, Alan's been at honors for decades now, what he's doing here. So um, I think it's just kind of that we're catching up to it. I know Guidance has talked to him for years about proposing this. You know, kids want to get honors credits for classes that... They want to be taking electives. Um, that's only just a natural fit fit for that. Well, I think we have uh, isn't band and chorus, aren't they? They have honors designation on them at certain level, don't they? Yes. Am I mistaken? Band. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and of course, we have AP Studio Art too. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's not as if we don't have classes that have that distinction. So I I am I would support recognizing students that have this kind of um, talent and put in the effort that they do because I think giftedness is um, you can be gifted in various right. areas, right? And sure. so I don't think that we should recognize one more than another. So I would be fine with giving them the honors designation because like Peter <coughs> just said, if you've been to the art show the, the, your spring display, I mean, you, you see the talent that's there, so. Now, when will, when will they start to receive honors credit? Will that go into effect this year or not till next year? Be retro? I don't, I don't know if I have the answer to that. <laughs> we have never retro. This, would, this no. is a program improvement proposal for next year. But are we changing, because it sounds like we're not changing anything. So if Correct. the kids this year are doing the same thing as the kids next yeah. year, I does see it make sense to just to also give them that honors credit? Yeah. I mean, to be fair, if you're not changing it, I could see someone saying, oh. Well, here's just the, 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 uh, an argument. What if a student would have taken it, was looking for honors courses, took a different honors course, but didn't take that, and then that gets a little money. Well, yeah. that's, uh, so what? it's kind of too late. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> and so the question you also have is students who took it last year. Yeah. Because yeah. I heard you say yeah. there are some juniors in the course, mm -hmm. who probably were some current seniors who were in yeah. it last year. And are you going to award them? I'm, I'm comfortable giving it to anyone because I think it is already an honors course and it's already been an honors course this entire time. So I would have no problem giving anyone credit for it because that's what it is. We're not changing it. If we were changing it, that would be a different story. Um, uh, are you saying Wood Four did not exist last year? Is that true? That Wood correct. Four did a new it, this year, so it's only it's happening three. right now, but so it's, it's brand new. Yes. Three we're talking about that could possibly win the last year. Into last year, correct? Curriculum last year and this year is identical. Right. In terms of what's being done. And I think um, there's definitely some students too who are focused on their, you know, their rank and their GPA and all of that, and, and right. pass up on this class who would really like to take this right. class. And so by giving this honors credit, it will open that door for those students, and it should because it's that it is a high level course. So is it a full year? Yes. Yes, yes both are a full year. And how many students are currently in level three or four? Uh, I was, I figured that was going to come up, so I was trying, because I don't teach them. Uh, I know Alan's full, full course load this year is level two, level three, and level four. He doesn't teach any level ones. So I would guess about half of his course load is probably threes and, and fours, if I didn't guess. So maybe somewhere 30 to 50, if I had a ballpark it. 
And is his enrollment full? Does yes. Full enrollment? Yes. I mean, the way I look at it, some if, if a kid took this class, despite the fact that they weren't getting honors credit, then they must have been more passionate about the class and they were yeah. willing to take it anyway, right? More passionate yeah. than the kids who passed it up because they weren't going to get honors credit. So, um, you know, I, I think it makes sense to give honors credit to anyone, which, again, like you said, would only be last year this year. Yeah. I'm comfortable with that. I don't know why the, the rest of the board. No, I, I, yeah, I agree with that because, and you know, yeah, you could say, oh, well, someone would have taken it or could have, well, but, right, so if you've taken it, you can, you can have the, uh, the honors designation and, you know, we're not going to worry about what you want. I'm not big on retroactivity. But I really am not. Because we've been down there. Okay, I think that's, that's a slippery slope that, you know, may guide us, not in this course, but somewhere else. So yeah. I would not do that. Right, like, did they do it when they gave honors well, we've never to the band? In the past. No, it wasn't backtracked. It was so changed. going forward, so it wasn't done before. But if they but change the course content, the course if the course content the isn't changing, I don't know how you can argue. It's just a revisitation. But if the I guess course it's a revisitation, I would always not care about giving retroactive I don't know how you justify not giving it if the course content hasn't changed. I mean, I would say that you would have to change something to justify saying to people, well, you took it last year and you're not getting honors credit, but lo and behold, we've decided to, you know, give honors credit, but we haven't changed the course. I mean, what's the justification for that? I, I, if you can offer an explanation, I mean, but otherwise I think that to be fair, you have to give it to them. Or alternatively, you have to make the course different somehow to distinguish it from what it is now. So I think we're comfortable with the way the course runs. And I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. Matt, that we already consider it that. So lo the logic you're speaking of is you didn't change anything. I'm taking this course. It should have been an honors course. It's going to be an honors course. So give the credit. So you're at the next level. So they were at level four the last, last year. Last, last year, year we added level four. That's correct. Yeah. No, level Level four was this year. year. Right. So and so level three was only available to eleventh and twelfth graders before. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, so I mean, how many kids are we talking about anyway that you'd be offering? Mm -hmm. the kids will not be upset. The other piece of the conversation to make sure that you're thinking about moving forward is there are very few honors courses in elective areas, mm -hmm. and so this would be introducing an honors course to elective areas, which I think is a wonderful conversation to have around student giftedness and thinking about what those curricular areas need to look like. This most likely will then not be the last recommendation when the art department or the business department or you fill in the blank mm -hmm. comes to say, our students are doing wonderful work, because that's true. I was at the art show. It's not just wood, where those students are yeah. doing amazing work that I look at and say, I have no idea how a 17 year old can do that, or an 18 year old can do that. We as a board need to be careful about the conversations we have as to what becomes an honors course and worthy of weighted grades versus not when you're looking at curricular development, right? In the content areas, it is easier because there's generally an academic and an honors. Outside of APs, there's generally two levels, and so the curriculum can differentiate between those two, and so the students select based off that differentiation. We are not making that differentiation here because there is not a level three academic board and an honors would, we are saying there is only honors. Which is okay to say. There are other school districts that do that, and the curriculum can be uh, written that way in terms of the level of work that is happening. And I do agree that this program is different from almost any other wood program I've ever experienced in terms of what is expected from the students. I don't know college wood well enough, but I trust that when they're saying that, that, that is true. That this is an AP type of college level course that students that are being considered for, for a weighted level. You just need to make sure that you're comfortable with what comes next mm -hmm. and what those conversations sound like. Because in isolation, all of these sound wonderful. We need to make sure from a curriculum standpoint, we are establishing what is weighted credit and what is not weighted credit and looking at the curriculum for, to, to be able to get those to charge. So you said that other school districts do, that you've seen this in other school districts where they've given the uh, uh, honors designation to It is rare that in, school, that in any curriculum document that there is an honors level without there being an academic level, okay. except for AP. 
which is not obviously not called honors. It happens occasionally in world language when you get to a level four yeah. or a level five that it's only offered in honors because it's generally very few kids. And that happens occasionally, but it is very rare to have an honors course without having the academic selection because the students have to pick it at, at the honors level, which is unusual from a curriculum standpoint. But it's also unusual to have an honors level course in a encore area, in, in, in an elective area. And I congratulate the board for having that conversation because I think we, I think that is a very good path to walk down for kids who have multi-talents. We just need to make sure that we're having these conversations about then what is, right? Because you probably wouldn't say yes to everything. And so you have to be careful about where that line is for you in terms of what it has to look like from a curriculum standpoint. And Dr. Shai does a wonderful job of helping be that gatekeeper with the curriculum documents and looks at that. And she and I have had that conversation about this course and this curriculum document. So I'm comfortable with the proposal. It just, we need to be careful about the conversation that happens next. And I don't know what that will be and when that will be and, and which department, but it will happen because mm -hmm. ARC yeah, loses kids to honors pre-calc as well. You know, yeah, or whatever well. they're losing kids to that are waiting courses. Mm -hmm. I th so. Yeah, I think that's fine. I mean, my, in my mind, while you were talking, I was thinking, for us in Penridge, now we have students in elementary taking STEM mm -hmm. and doing these, not, not exactly this, but you know what I'm saying, they are doing these sorts of things. So to me, that's academic, academic, academic. Now, when you get to the high school, yeah, like right. to have them, just like you said, I think German is one of the languages that it's automatically honors. I know one of my level, kids, perhaps, is, yeah. it's automatically an honor, so if you opt into it. And so, since we start so early with our students, which I think is great, to me this seems logical. But I agree that you'll have to be careful about um, going forward with the other courses, maybe that you would offer it to. I think this is an obvious one, in my mind, just because of the level of artistry in it. Well, I think the, the bar is also set high, like an honors course, and so if a kid is not, I mean, is you know, is not keeping up to that level, then they're not going to. It's it's just like any other honors course that they would take. So I, I think we might end up with an with an enrollment you know issue where everybody wants to take this class. <laughs> we're going to have more people trying to get in, and then we're going to figure out how to fit in more sections. <laughs> sometimes yes, and sometimes no. The right. business <laughs> department tried that some years ago. <laughs> They wanted to have counting two an honors course, which we eventually did, and they still had trouble enrolling hmm. in that one big course. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it just the traffic. But I think I've heard that a lot of students want to take this, and some oh, of them are afraid to because of the, how it will affect their rank, which is oh yeah, that's, you know that's constant. Which, which always bothers me because I'd rather them take the classes that you know. The, yeah, because when do you get this opportunity again to? to do something like this and so it is special and if they have the skill but I agree that they have to it can't just be a oh you're, you're taking that said anyone here right. Right. so is there do you have recommendations for kids or anyone I, who can I would say that a student to get from level one to level two is kind of like a tryout and then from two to three you really have the kids that want to be there and can handle it. Okay. You know what I mean? And and I'm fine with that level one. You know, come try whatever. You, know, you talk about experiences here. I say that to kids all the time. Play whatever sport you want. Take whatever class you want because you're not. We have awesome things here. You're not going to be able to do that when you leave. So I have no problem with the kid coming in. And I have some kids who have said it to me. Mr. P, you're great. And I loved your, this just isn't for me. I'm not taking that. Okay, fair enough. You know. And, it's like and, trying a new food. And, uh, but yeah, by level three and four, it, I, I think you're talking about kind of the varsity, if you will, like mm -hmm. kids that are going to succeed. We're not going to have to give honors credit for varsity sports. Mm -hmm. I think the other thing is, if, if, you're, if you're going into if you're going into the level three course, then you had to have taken the first two courses. So right. most yeah. of those kids, I mean, I don't know at that point that you get many of those kids who would have taken it if it was going to be an honors course, because then they would have had to take those other two years too. So they're either they're, you know they're either interested in it or they're not at that point. By the time you get to level three. So where do we go um, as far as figuring out 
be that there's where this you know whether we make this retroactive but so if we agree that's what we're going to do then i will work with guidance office at the high school and we will track down the students well what are your thoughts on retroactivity so i it's i'm being pulled in two directions so yeah i know. never allowed it we just didn't do it there were a lot of students who were, would have been affected for various reasons the logic behind we didn't change anything kind of pulls me in that direction because it is the same class. So I can see the logic. It does become a little difficult. In terms of this particular class, I don't know that the numbers would have been higher for some of the things that we would, you know, the number of students that we have looked at this in the past would have affected an enormous amount of students. So I understand both sides. I certainly will support it. That's where we want to go, and I will work with the high school to ensure that it happens. Should we take it in two separate parts? Like everybody's comfortable with this being an honors course, and then just the other part separately. Whether you would, right. retro I would it. recommend that it be two separate motions on the agenda because it is two separate actions. Because yeah. one can be done without the other. Yeah. Right. So you're feeling about the course, and you're feeling about retroactive in terms of the GPA. Um, the, the one piece I would say in support of making it retroactive. I tend to be the same way that you are, not the RNL, that my first reaction is no, we play by the rules. And when you sign up for the courses, these were the rules. In this instance, for a student who is playing the GPA game, I don't think those are the students we're talking about here because they would have chosen to take an honors course instead of this course. It's not, it's not like they took this course to play the GPA game. The kids who chose this course chose not to take a weighted class. So to give them a weight that is not going to tip somebody from Three to two would be my guess in terms of when we're talking about the GPA ranking. Um, so I think in this case, the fact that the curriculum had not been touched and it is the exact same course the kids have been taken, and that there wasn't an honors equivalency available to any student who chose not to take this course, that they could have taken an honors something, whether they did or not is up to them. That I don't think you face that battle of, oh, uh, well, I would have taken it had I known. Well, there were options there for you to take the same weighted level or even more for making these take. Um, so in this case, I would recommend if you're going to do it, because it's the same class to, that my support would be behind also the students who have a transcript. So and we can find out how many kids that is, so you have that information prior to the vote just in case that matters to you. We can also look at some GPAs to see whether it truly does make a difference from a standpoint of oh, all of a sudden we change the rules for some group of kids. Okay. That sounds fair to me. But right. do, we, do we need to establish a line going forward of where we would back? Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, go back to, I mean, if we change another elective, how far would it go back? I, mean, I think back those are really case by case conversations. Uh, because I, I think it is an un unusual situation that we're doing mm -hmm. in terms of not changing the course but changing the, you know, I don't, I don't think that happens often no. in terms of, because usually it's a curriculum change or a new course or something from the standpoint. And again, Dr. Scheid really working with the curriculum vote I think will be your guide to be that first level of gatekeeper in terms of recommendation about what is appropriate or not and bring information to you to help you determine those in, in those one-offs where that situation happens. But I think it will be frequent would be my guess. Yes, I, I do see it being very frequent. Okay. This was this kind of just stood out. This this class, this program is just so exceptional mm -hmm. because I probably would have pushed back a little bit more on the idea, but I've seen it in action and I've watched mm -hmm. these kids and I've sat with these kids and I've seen what they do and they really just deserve it. So it, to me, it's the exception, not the rule. I mean, maybe we'll have this conversation about another class sometime, but I would imagine we're changing the curriculum okay. to ask for that. This really was the exception. And actually, I don't know that it is going to open a big door because those kids who are counting all of their credits would have to take two academic courses before they could take this on this course. They'd still miss that for two years. Right. So I think it, that's, it's really just giving credit to the kids for their talents and mm -hmm. their Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so we have two separate. You're going to do two separate. You have to tell Alan he has to buy you lunch tomorrow. Tom, <laughs> <laughs> we put you through the gauntlet. <laughs>
Thank you, Dr. Barber. Thank you for your patience. Yeah. I promise, it's a tough act to follow, though. <laughs> <laughs> I can't promise you that our discussion will be even remotely as exciting, but you know Yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is the AP Environmental Science um, text discussion, part two. Part two. Part two. 2.0. Yes. Um, I do want to thank you for the opportunity to revisit uh, this proposal, and I am especially grateful for the time to conduct additional research and appropriate research to find out what's really going to serve our, our students in the best ways possible. So at the request of the board, we conducted a survey of all current AP students and did structure it so that they could only respond once. All right, so we have students in multiple AP courses, but we were